the lady I'm the lady I'm going to speak to now, Rua Fihan, uh, a lady of this parish, of this, these mm -hmm. parts, she will tell me she's just a student. In my book, she's not. She's a remarkable woman, a young woman of Our Lady's provenance in Yuri. She's been to the West Bank, Palestine, Gaza, and that whole troubled area, and she's been there to teach and to help there. You're most welcome. How okay. are you? Grand, How old are you now? Nineteen. Wow. A big a baby <laughs> out among the the creatures of the jungle of the world. Mm. What took you to the West Bank? Um, well, my brother has been going for the past four years, and I had to wait until I was eighteen before I could go. Mm. Just chomping at the bit to go, really. Rua, what made you champ at the bit? What was it that said to you at home in Bestbrook or at at Lurgan Air? Uh, I need to go here. What was the moment that it came into focus for you? Um, seeing and hearing stories about what my brother experienced when he was out there and realizing how lucky I am to have been brought up here where you know we're completely free and we're given an education and everything is we have so many opportunities that <clears throat> I should use my how would you say your it? skill my and your skill intelligence. yeah that I've learned just from growing up here that yeah. people might not have there mm -hmm. Because we're very blessed here. Were, we were, just were some of the stories you heard, were they stories of horrible events? Yep, that would harp back to times gone by here, mm. of people just being Bombs taken from and bullets there. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you went. Mm -hmm. Now, a woman in Lurgan Air wanting to go to Palestine, to the West Bank, how do you go about doing it? <laughs> Um, well, there's a charity in England called the Cambridge Nazareth Trust that helped organise it. Um, and was it Nazareth you went to? I went to um, I, I went to Jerusalem last year to uh, Bethanina, um, which it's it was interesting. It was really cool to go to because you were mm. ten minutes on a bus journey from the most holy sites in the world. You wow! Know, which was quite surreal. Yeah, yeah, totally surreal. Because mm -hmm. there's that image of the Jerusalem Valley with the the onion skin domes of the mm -hmm. Russian Orthodox people. There's the the, the big dome itself, mm -hmm. you know. There, it's the a very citadel of of modern of all Christianity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there things that our ladies that fired you? The, our ladies has a great reputation <laughs> for outreach to the world. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, your 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 education at Our Ladies would have led you in the direction of reaching out to the world. Well, yes. From first year, we were taught um, that we're very very blessed, and a lot of charity work from day one of Our Ladies, and mm. it drove me a lot because I realised how lucky I was to go to such an amazing school and to be supported by a great family. To I can be anything I want to be. Hey, so that's a great thought. <laughs> I can be anything I want to be, mm -hmm. which is which is great. But in in going there, can you tell me now when you went through the uh, Cambridge Nazareth Trust? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me of the, your first arrival there in the land? You arrived and suddenly in the airport. <laughs> your heart is going a wee bit, do, 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 and you're looking out at complete strangeness of environment. Yeah, well, I travelled a lot and. Um, but this was nothing like I've really ever experienced. I've never experienced um, such tough questioning at the really? airport security. Yeah. And were the military people who were questioning <clears throat> you? They were just in uniforms, like you would see at customs. But yeah. you know, they were doing their their service to to the their country, national their service. national service. Yeah. yeah. And these were Jewish people. Um, Israeli people. Yeah. Israeli people. Mm -hmm. And those people. Uh, what kind of questions made you feel this is tough questioning? Um, why are you here? Um, why why here? Why why Israel? Yeah. Um, and then when I told them I was teaching, they were like, mm, "You you're teaching? What yeah. what makes you so good to teach?" Yeah. So it was it was tough, but I just had to remember that we're not doing anything wrong out there. We're going out to no, help and. No. Just Did you sense any any sympathy from them at all? Any any gratitude that you were coming to help? Not a bit. Not a bit. No. Did you sense arrogance? Um, anger and hostility. Really. Anger and hostility to you. Yeah. They were making assumptions about you. Yeah, and they were like, I don't even know how to describe it. I just it made me feel feel sick to my stomach. Just the nerves, of, 
oh, I don't even, I can't even describe mm. it. It's just, it was tough, like. Yeah. But so you, you, you got through this, mm -hmm. obviously. It wasn't a problem to you. No. You got over all of that. You were then, what was your destination? Who were you going to see? Who were you going to meet? What nationality were they? Um, they were Palestinian, so the, we were, they were Christian, so <clears throat> they're labelled as Arabs because they live in the Middle East and they're not Jewish, so they were Arabs, so... You went onward by bus? By bus, yes. There was, okay. I think there was, I think it was 16 of us last year, um, mm -hmm. from England and from around this area. Um, we travelled to a town called, or a village, sorry, called Jiffin in the West Bank for the first few nights, and then we all sort of dispersed. There was two per camp, so I went to myself and a girl from Restrever went to Jerusalem, and then there's people in Ramallah and Bethanina and all these different places. Ramallah is a name. Mm. That's that's. It's that's, a great city. Is it really? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. How would you sum up the character of the people, your hosts, the people you went to be with? just the hope they have they and have hope. they have so much hope and so hope. much faith and it's I was shocked I was like how can you have faith when your back's up against a wall and because kids came up to my brother the first year he went out and was like why are you here everything everyone across the world thinks we're terrorists and to think that these are young Christian children that just run about the village and go to school and play with their friends that they think the world is branding them as terrorists and that's what got me as well that how could a young child feel helpless really that the world doesn't the world doesn't value them and that they're forgotten yeah but they still have so much hope and faith that hope things faith. will happen yeah for the better did you sp did you feel fear among them the next never. rocket to fall no nope. never i'm never afraid of the palestinians i felt safe as soon as no, i went no, to the west bank did you sense fear with them them being fearful of the next rocket that would come in from Israel or the next attack? No. They were aware of the possibility. They were aware of the possibility and the the hardship they have to face like every day with uh, checkpoints and settlements being right in their doorstep and refugee camps but it's just it's part of their life they've never known any different mm -hmm. really. Was there anywhere in the whole experience uh, uh, of being there that you saw even the slightest little ray of hope of a Palestinian person making contact with an Israeli person or an Israeli making contact with a Palestinian, that there was some little glimmer, mm -hmm. an ember, that if delivered to the right wind could yeah. flame up into something bigger and better. Well, in my camp, um, technically my camp was in um, Israel because it was in Jerusalem, and the people that organized it were 21 year old guys like they were really young but had so much wisdom and so much drive to change each other's lives so they they organized this summer camp um with the help of the parish and they all went to university in bethlehem and some of them went to university in jerusalem and they have israeli friends they have friends that aren't of the same community and yeah. i asked them questions like is there do all israelis not like Palestine like I was quite I was quite oh gosh I wonder what happens out here when I was going out and I wanted I asked a lot of could seem like silly questions but I needed to know but there's a, they said there's a lot of support from the Israeli community for Palestine but it's the people that believe that what Israel's doing is right is what's probably causing the, pro the trouble and how would they you know the people who are talking to you the, the Palestinian people who were saying the world views us as terrorists mm -hmm. Would Hamas, for example, be their heroes or not? Definitely not. Definitely not. I, ha I didn't meet one Palestinian that supported Hamas. All they wanted to do was just live their life, be able to <clears throat> travel the world, which they can't. They can't leave the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. They can't leave. You need a permit to go to Jerusalem. You can't, it's like an open-air prison. All they want to do is just be able to go to the beach and have a beer with their friends. That's, what, that's all they want. Mm -hmm. They don't want the world and they don't want to cause any bother. They just want to be free, really. Mm -hmm. So when you see, as we're seeing at the moment, the consequences of rockets coming from Israel into Gaza, mm -hmm. what does that do to you? It breaks my heart because you see the photos and the videos and of children, and they're like just like the children I taught. Like why that could be that could be someone in my camp that could be dead or lost their dad or lost their mum. 
it just makes it really real because my friends and my Palestinian family there, it's them that are being affected. And they're the people who are innocent of any terrorism. Yeah. My friends and my family. They're Christians, they just want they just want to be free and love their life and have you any hope? Any optimism? Yeah, we can't give up hope really. Um, we just need to keep doing little bits and helping people become more educated about it. Because I wasn't, I didn't know a lot about it before my brother started going, and it's something that's very passionate to our entire family now. That because we understand that education is the only way these children are gonna, you know, rise up and become strong. So if we can change like one kid's outlook on life, then we've done something very valuable, I think. Thank you. Thank you.